Hello, this is Deborah with Black Education TV. Earlier this week, I had a couple of thoughts resting on my mind as I observe people. You know, as you go places, go here, you go there, and you just observe people and you look at them. And you can kind of analyze people and their thoughts sometimes and their feelings or their attitude or just a little bit about them just by looking at them. One thing I notice about everybody, and I'm talking everybody, is that for the most part, as we walk about in our day and we're doing things and we're um, planning things, achieving things, accomplishing things, most people don't, don't take the time to consider that the life that is in them does not belong to them. When I say the life that is in you, I'm talking about the breath, the very breath that you breathe. Because once you are separated from that breath or that life, that's it. You're finished. Now I'm, I'm talking about as it relates to this body, this physical life that we live, this physical body. We know that there is something beyond death. I know some people don't believe in that, but it, it, whether you believe it or not, it is what it is. But for the most part, most of us, we go about in our lives and we don't consider that the breath or the life that we have does not belong to us. And that is actually a gift. This gift that has been given to all of us that exists on this earth today doesn't care what color you are, how much money you have, where you live. The scripture says that Yah reigns on the just and the unjust. You see, this is why you have people living all over this planet with various types of existences. Some good, some bad, some rough, some smooth. But the one thing we all have in common is that this life that we have, this breath that we breathe is borrowed, or should I say has been granted or given to us as a gift. Life is a gift. And when you walk about and you take it for granted, you think that that next breath is yours, that you have some type of control over that, that there is nothing that could separate that life from you. As I'm walking down towards the water here, I see a snake slithering his way over there. Usually, for me, that would have meant running really fast in the opposite direction. Uh, but thanks to Sister Kay and um, a few others, I don't have to panic about those things. Just, you know, know my place. I'm not going to get too close to him nonetheless. He's, he's made his way all the way over here. Let me see if I can zoom in. Even the life that he lives doesn't belong to him. I don't know if you all can see that, but uh, there he is, slithering. He is slithering. And it's very foreign. It's a very foreign thing for Deborah out to be going after a snake. But there he is, slithering, making his way. Yeah. Okay, let me get back to what I'm talking about now. Okay. But this life that we live, many of us take it for granted that... It is ours and that there's nothing anyone can do to take this life from us the way we have it planned out. We have it all mapped out the way we want things to go. We want the things to proceed this way or that way. And we feel like as long as we want that. Okay, that was a frog that time. <laughs> okay, family. Today is a day of nature. Okay, everything. You know, the scripture says, let everything that hath breath praise Yah. You hear all of that? That creature is praising Yah. Here I am talking about life, the life that we live, the life that we have been granted. We take it for granted. The life that we have been given, we take it for granted. But even these creatures, they know. They know, and they are thankful and grateful, and they go in the flow of where they're supposed to because they know 
that snake went away from me because he knows that it is within my power to take his life. You see, they understand that. Creatures, the creatures that Yah have created, they understand that. But we as so-called advanced species, human beings and all of that, walk about in this pride as if this life belongs to us and that the control of this life is in our hands. Now we can say on a small degree that it is, only on a small degree, if you only understood how much. I mean, of course, you feed this body to keep it alive. You nourish it, you give it water or liquid, whatever it needs to survive. You clothe it, you keep it warm when it's cold, you cool it off when it's hot. You do all those things that this body needs. But what we don't realize is that the power of Yah is of this sort. That you can live the best and most healthy life a person can live. And the breath of life can just be snatched right from you just like that, in the twinkling of an eye. I'm so grateful to the Most High for all that He has done for me. I thank Him for healing my body. I thank Him for the life that is in me. And I think we need to understand, we need to look at the animals, consider how they do things, consider how they trust and believe. You know how the scripture says, His eye is on the sparrow. That sparrow doesn't get up every morning worried about how he's gonna live that day. He just goes about and, do, and does what he's supposed to, you see. But we, as those who call ourselves advanced, we don't even consider the ant. The ant is far more advanced than we are. The creatures of Yah, far more advanced than we are. We have been given dominion over them but they are far more advanced in terms of being in tune with the order of Yah. We may be advanced as far as the things that we are able to do on this planet, but they are far more in tune with the will of Yah than we are. As I listen to the creatures of the air, the birds, even that snake that I saw, All of the creatures that roam about, they understand the order of Yah. And it's very rare that you see animals, very rare that you see animals fight against the order of Yah. But people do it all the time. Always fighting against the order of Yah. And this is why the planet is kicking back as man drills, digs, and does all these things to tear up and destroy Yah's earth, and they do it with a boastful pride, whether you're rich or poor, people walk about as if that life belongs to them, and they have not a clue that that life does not belong to them, and that when their appointment shows up, because the scripture says, is once appointed unto man to die, then after that the judgment. When your appointment shows up, there is nothing you can do. Absolutely nothing you can do. Because death doesn't care what you look like, how tall you are, how short you are, how rich or poor you are. When it's your appointment time, that life that you took for granted, it just fades away. The scripture says your life is but a vapor. If we keep those things in mind as we live, we would be more thankful and we'd be more careful with the things that we do or allow ourselves to do. I wanted to speak a little bit longer on this subject, but it's time for us to leave. I've been meaning to do this for a few days now. Like I said, I walked about and I observed people as we go to happy to be alive, but they don't understand. They just don't grasp where that life comes from. 
the fact that they are alive. Most people don't even think about that. Most people are so selfish, self-centered, and they can care less why they got up this morning because they, they assume that they are. Tomorrow's not promised to anyone. But when you look at a boastful, prideful, arrogant person, or a person who just don't acknowledge Yah at all, or a person who don't even think about him, don't love him, don't trust him, and some that even do claim to love and trust him, and you allow yourself to go in a certain direction or go down a certain path or do certain things, do you really truly trust and love the Most High? We should all be thankful for our lives. Everyone under the sound of my voice, you didn't get here on your own. I know you think your being here is a result of just your parents coming together. No, it's far more to it than that. Your lights can be turned out by the same one who turned them on. Whether you're rich, poor, black, white, Asian, Latino, whether you're a monkey or an ape, a snake or a fish, a bird or a frog, the breath of life comes from the Most High Yah. I'm just saying that includes you too. And I'm going to close on this note. Let everything that hath breath praise Yah. Shalom, family.